Okay, the live replay is seem to be working, so that is very very good, considering we couldn't get into the game with the players. Because the connection problems were actually quite disgusting between FTX Commander and Blinchick, but it seems like they have managed to go and fix it. So well, the map is gonna be huge open wonder and let's see if who's gonna wait what. Huh. It seems like Blinchick and FTX Commander are actually not gonna be playing in this round. As when we look at the amount of players available per team, it's only gonna be three of them, so we have the wheelie. On the left flank we're gonna have Arch Simcat, and then we're gonna have Donny Noob, so... Okay guys, it seems like the deal is like that. The players... FTX Commando and Blinchik are basically gonna go and sit out this round while they're most likely trying to go and fix their connection issues, so yeah. It seems like it's gonna be a 3v3 game with 3 players and 3 AIs. As we can see there is AI Yara here, second one here and the third one is gonna be playing on this spot here, so yeah. 3 human players and 3 AIs for this round. And well, fingers crossed that in the next game we will actually have Blinchik and FTX Commando back, so well, let's go and see. Anyway, this time around we're gonna go and watch Huge Wonder Open or Huge Open Wonder or Wonder Huge Open, I have no clue. Because this map is always confusing for me what should be the nickname of it, but yeah. It's, well, basically Wonder, but open and huge, so yeah. A lot of mass extractors or mass points that you can go and fight for. Medal, obviously gonna be some reclaim available. How much? Let me see. 8000 reclaim available here on this reclaim patch on the middle. Which is, well, obviously something you will have to go and fight for. But otherwise, it's basically all flat. All open. Max is gonna be unprotected. You can make run buys on the side. You can try to make a run through the middle, you can even try to go and make a big standoff happen somewhere here around this position and then basically ditch your army into two smaller armies, I mean split it, and basically try to make a push on one of the sides to make a run by and try to score some G2 max kills on the side, so yeah. Anyway, it seems like the right side player for the bottom team for Musketeers is gonna be Waffle Noob playing Aeon in baby blue. Then to his left side we're gonna go and see Paralon as playing UEF in Lavender Violet. Then as his support it's gonna be Budak also playing UEF this time in Deep Violet. And it's gonna be the AI on the air slot it's gonna be Cement playing Aeon in Cyan. Then in Innocent White on the left flank it is gonna be Achnu Ulevash playing Seraphim in Innocent White and then, last but not least, is gonna be Jessica playing Aeon in Royal Blue. Their opponents on the left flank is gonna be Arch Simcat opting for his well-known orange color and opting for the UEF faction. On the middle it is gonna be the Wheelie playing UEF in Bloody Red. Then on the air slot it is gonna be Insidious Noob playing Aeon. It seems like Aeon is always gonna be the faction of choice for the air players. Then the middle support is gonna be Paji Chaki or Paj Chav. I have no clue how to pronounce them, but it, yeah, it's gonna be Seraphim AI playing in Lemon Yellow. And then on the bottom right flank it's gonna be Yare playing Aeon. And then the last AI, it's gonna be no one else but Mr. Kochne. Or Kohe, Kochne. I guess it's German and I have no clue how to pronounce it, but yeah, it's gonna be UEF in brownish yellow. Anyway, it seems like the AI is already gonna go for the early bombers, as we can see, trying to go and bomb the engines belonging to Paralon. Which would go and leave some lasting damage. That is, if you could to actually. No! It seems like it's gonna go and kill the. 
power belonging to Paralon, which I guess could be a good choice, that is. If not for the fact that the enemy AI, Mr. Budak, is already prepared with a bunch of interceptors to go and catch the boogies. But yeah, for now it seems like we will have all of the players slowly expand towards the sides. We can see a Waffle Noob sending out a few engineers and uh, I mean few labs and a few tanks with a uh, spirit, spirit to go and try to protect his flanks. A very good choice considering that the AI tends to be pretty aggressive with its early light assault bots. Although this one here seems to be preferring more of the heavy tank approach. As we can see, instead of going for any laps, it's gonna go straight for the tanks. But I'm really interested to see if we will actually see the AI go and crash one of the sides, or if the players are actually gonna go and stabilize. Considering this is, well, AIX, there is a lot of bonus economy and build power available to them. But interestingly enough, it seems like no one is going for the middle reclaim yet. Only Willy is sending some kind of units here to go and find the enemy engineers or maybe some stragglers from Paralon. But uh, it's open wonder, so the action is gonna start in a few more minutes. After players finally go and grab their expansions and only then keep on going for the T3 upgrades. After all, this map looks like a prime titan and loyalist map, so yeah. I guess we can expect some T3 units to be prowling around. And actually, let's go and take a look if we... yeah, there is the T2HQ already finished for Paralon going for the T2 pigeons going... yep. He will grab a T2 Super Factory, which will then start producing some pilars, but it doesn't seem like he's gonna go for the T3 rush. On the other hand, it seems like Bully is gonna be doing exactly the same thing as Paralon, going for the T2 HQ and then some T2 tanks. I guess Blaze is gonna be a really powerful option here. Cement going for the T3 air. Already done with the first pigeon, going for the second one, and then gonna go straight for the T3HQ. So yeah, he's looking quite decent here. Meanwhile, his opponent, Delhi. He seems to be a little bit behind, but yeah. It seems like he's also gonna opt for making a T2 transport for his teammates. And oh my, it seems like Bullionub is actually being pushed back by the AI forces, as you can see, Kochne AI. Using his tanks to basically push Bully Noob around. Though I guess in a few more minutes, or even seconds, the situation is gonna change. As we can see that Bully Noob, also known as Waffles Noob, is gonna go for the T3HQ swap. Not gonna make any blazes, just gonna go straight for the Harbringers. As it seems like Paralon is gonna be the one buying the tie with the gun upgrade here. And also with a bunch of pilots, so I guess it should be fine. Really going around, trying to find some weak points in the enemy army, but it seems like the Kremen pilot is gonna be the one who's gonna get shot down by a bunch of strikers. But still, with the pilots finally hitting the field for Paralon, Mr. Willy will either have to go and then spawn in kind or go for the T3 upgrade, and yep. He is going for the T3 HQ. I'm gonna skip the T2 basically instantly. Just grab a few pilars to buy some time and then it's gonna be Titan time. But oh my goodness, it seems like... Arch Simcat is actually being pushed back by the AI players for the Musketeers. As we can see the White and Deep Violet actually managing to counter push this position which just a few moments ago belonged to our steam cut which is very nice to see but a small counter push with a few pilots from the wheelie will secure this position once again honestly i don't think that arch have even to go and fall back so much considering his a ACU should be more than capable enough to go and 
Defend versus this small army. Let's see the mid lane. It seems like the Willy is taking some decent trade versus Paralon. And here is the T2 transport that I was actually speaking, the one that Delhi made, and it seems like he's going straight for the base belonging to... Temer, or maybe not base, but just gonna go and drop the units here. To make sure that he can go and erase 1, 2, 3, 3 T2 Maxes, and also T2 Super Factory, which is very nice indeed. So yeah, that drop is gonna go and deal some lasting damage, no wonder he was actually a tad bit behind. Compared to the AI, or should I say compared to Waffle on the other flank. Because the man was actually planning to go and deal some damage behind the enemy lines, which is always a welcome change of pace. Because honestly, I don't think we have seen anyone actually go and use the T2 transport to drop around T1 RT in this tournament yet, so yeah. A very nice change up, but let's go back to the front line, because it seems like Bully Noob is gonna go and repush the enemy AI just fine with a bunch of T2 units. And with help of Paralon ACU, the AI will have to basically go and turn, sail around and run away. But I don't like this situation here, because the wheelies firmly had to have way more units available. So Paralon better watch out for his ACU, otherwise he might be in a world of trouble. Although it seems like the AI is not gonna go and push him, so yeah. The Willy also won't find a chance to go and secure a kill on him. But so far it seems like when it comes to the AI forces, the lower AI is doing much much better because it's still controlling this position. Meanwhile on the other hand, we can see that Waffle and Paron are actually in control of this Freemax expansion. And it seems like with the ACU pushing in closer and closer, they might break through even through this position here, so yeah. Topside AI having some trouble dealing with the enemy players. But I guess that's how it's gonna look when it's two ACUs versus one. But yeah. Titans from the wheelie finally hitting the field, and with that, the piler time is gonna be over. But considering we're at minute 11, we should go and take a look at the air players. Two air factories available for Cement, third one going up. And his opponent, Delhi. He is actually gonna be ahead, already free, fully producing, and the fourth one is also done, so yeah. Delhi actually quite ahead. And when it comes to the mass income, 130 versus 80 versus 90. Yeah, the top team should have the air game in their pocket. But the question is, how are they gonna actually go and use it? Because it seems like the bottom team is aware of that mishap, and yeah. Already MAA being mixed in with the units for Waffle Nook, meaning that Parallel and Waffle Nook should be actually capable of protecting themselves from incoming air units, so no pesky snipes gonna happen here on the right flank. But the big problem is gonna be this spearhead here. As the wheelie is basically going all in on the push through the middle and basically ledging his forces between the enemy, ACU, and their bases, meaning that no kind of support is gonna go and join them. At least not for a while, but it seems like Harbringers from Bully Noob are gonna go and join the left flank. Instead of going to the front line versus AI there, he recognizes the fact that dealing with this Titan push here is gonna be actually much more important. Although the Triads and the T1PD seem to buy just enough time to get there with the Pilars, providing a lot of HP on the front line for them, so yeah, it seems like maybe, just maybe, this push is not as good as we have thought initially. And instead, Willy Noob I mean, the wheelie is gonna actually go to the top side, gonna go and grab a few kills on the PDs. And then he will most likely try to go and choke out this push here from Paralon and from Bullion. Yeah, 
is, but I don't think it's actually gonna go and kill the enemy ACU. As we can see, Paralon fighting overcharge, which is gonna go and kill two Titans at the same time, granting the second Veterancy upgrade to Paralon. Another Titan gonna fall down, shields also blinking as they lose all of their HP. And yeah, they're really recognizing the fact that there's just way too, enemy, way too much enemy units available here. He is gonna go and fall back to cut his losses. Very good choice indeed. You don't wanna keep giving the Veterancy upgrades to the enemy ACU, and especially to a player made ACU. And on the left flank, it seems like Archsinkat is actually doing quite okay, I guess, versus AI. He also made the T3 switch, as we can see the Titans from him, dealing enormous damage to the T1 entity units belonging to the AI. A small force have been this part to actually go and try and kill the T2 Maxis belonging to an enemy AI. The pings are coming out. But with no MAA basically available, I mean a single skybox that on 200 HP is basically no MAA at all, so yeah. I feel like a single T3 Restorer is gonna be enough to basically clean up this whole mess here for the bottom team. But let's see how much ASF are actually available. 22 for bottom team. And Donny is on... 35, so he have basically nearly doubled the ASF number, so I would really like to go and see some kind of air fight happening instead of playing this so slow and easy. Especially as Donny is still quite firmly ahead when it comes to the economy and everything for the air players. As Cement have been really set back behind by the sneaky drop here on the left flank by Arch Simcat. Okay, it seems like Famslet is gonna go and cut off the Harbringers belonging to Waffelnoop. Gonna take a really good trade here, finishing off the T3 Assault bots. So yeah, that should be a decent trade, especially if you can go and move in the Engineers to go and grab all of the Reclaim here, because there is quite a lot of it. 12,000 on the screen. And when we look at the mass income, it seems like both teams are actually going head to head. 870 mass for both of them. But what I really like is actually the wheelie. Managing to go and play two flanks at the same time. We can see him basically making push versus the AI on the middle. While also making sure that his own AI is gonna stay protected by this army here. So very interesting place out here, we can see that the pro player's macro is really something to behold. Looking for options for attack everywhere, protecting your teammates. If only Donny was actually willing to play a little bit more aggressive, this would be just beautiful then. But yeah, we can see the push dealing a lot of damage, killing units one after another. Although the T1 PDs should be actually dispatched quite faster. Okay. They have it finished off. But actually, let's take a look at the air grids. This is gonna be 4, 6, 7 air factories for Insidious Noob. Meanwhile, his opponent is gonna be on only 5 of them, so yeah. So I really want to go and see an air fight happen or something. Because this is basically the moment to strike back, considering we have just so much more build power available. So Donny, 55 versus Cement. Oh. This is actually quite surprising, as Cement is actually catching up. He has less factories available. But for some reason, he's actually... Nearly caught up versus Donny, so I guess Donny is just trying to go and grab as many T3 Maxes as possible. So he was stalling mass here and there. But... No, Cement is actually coming back, we can see he's only 20 mass behind, so... 
Very interesting indeed, because after what Artsinka did, I would hope that the area would be clearly won. And yet, Semen is actually showing some really good echoing, and basically echo balance and everything. As the man is still managing to keep the pace up with Donny. So that's very nice to see. Arch Simka, they're actually gonna get pushed back a little bit. And I would really love him to go and see and start using more engineers to actually go and grab the reclaim because there is 6,000 of it available. And he's not getting it at all. It's all getting being stolen by the AI. But yeah, the right flank is starting to look quite bad, as you can see that the Harbringers are getting quite more numerous with the time passing. And as such, the Titans are no longer gonna go and cut it. Thankfully, the Wheelie is actually gonna recognize this and gonna go and make the switch for the Percival. Which is very nice indeed, a good move. As Harbs, while slower than Titans, are much more powerful units, so yeah. Very good choice to switch to the Percivals. Anyway, we have hit the minute 18 mark, so let's see if we have some kind of experimental units being built, okay. AI building a fat boy, so that is very nice to go and see. Especially on Open Wonder, because this map is as flat as my girlfriend, so yeah. Fat boy is really gonna have a good time here. Like basically just move it to the front line and basically just keep getting the free value by getting the damage done on units from 100 meters away. Although on the other hand, because this is a huge open water, like for example, let's pick Arch Simcat. Do we have the T2 upgrade? Yes, you have. You can basically go and build an artillery here in this place, a bunch of them here, and well, it will make sure that the fat boy won't be able to go and c come anywhere close to this position here, so... I guess fat boys are really a double-edged sword. As long as your opponent is not using the clink hammers with the artillery, you can basically keep on getting free values by erasing all of the enemy land forces, but the moment they start turtling in with the T2 artillery, it's gonna be actually quite horrible. Anyway, let's go and see the other AIs, Jessica, starting out the GC, very nice. And the other boy is gonna go and start the Etota, so yeah. All three bottom AIs starting the experimental units. And the top side, also fat boy, nearly halfway done, very good. Otherwise, we have a GC which have been just started by Kochner. Or should I say Yara? Kochner is the one you're doing the fat boy. And the last AI is just gonna keep on scaling. But yeah, Farm Sletier really having a hard time here, having to go and play versus two players at the same time. And sure, he does have some support from the teammates, I mean the AI. The question is, is the AI actually gonna be proved to be really useful? Although I can see that the MMLs are doing some decent damage from the AI. But what I'm afraid is of Vulnu making a GC and basically walking it down here. As it can trade very favorably versus the small UEF army. Especially if Pyroline is gonna go and support him with this big land army, it would be just beautiful. Because after all, if you actually micro the GC properly as a player, you can get really sick value out of it. And unfortunately, the AI is impossible to get this much of value, so yeah. To be honest, I would really s love to see the wheelie make a fat boy. But I guess with the amount of units he have to keep on pumping out from the T3 factories to just make sure... Okay, we have a TML actually made, but it seems like it's not gonna... No, it's not TML. It was just clean hammer shell. 
Buddy, it seems like Pyralon is gonna go and opt for the D2 artillery emplacement, so... Making a fat boy by the wheelie would be actually a mistake at this moment, because it would be impossible to basically come anywhere close to the range of this base here. As T2 static artillery is basically a hard counter to a fat boy. So yeah, anytime you see your opponent making a fat boy, and there is not many places it can go, just build a few artillery in the choke points and well, the fat boy is gonna be useless. It seems like Paralon might be eyeing a push here through the middle. So the question, they're just eyeing... Okay, it seems like he will go and make the push happen. The first shots are being fired as a harbinger, so I'm gonna keep on falling back. But we'll just how much more units are available for the right side team. No, never mind. There was some Percival's hidden behind the rocks that I didn't see, so... I'm not really sure who will win this fight, but it's looking quite glorious. We can see all of the shells being exchanged as plasma fire is flying left to right. But Paralon is actually gonna take the L and fall back. So I guess he was the one to initiate the fight. And he's also gonna be the one to go and call it quits. But now, there is like nearly 20,000 mass available here. And with engineers available for the wheelie, this is gonna be quite bad. If they can actually, if the wheelie can get their hands on this. Yep, we can see Sparky's being dispatched to go and grab the reclaim, which is very nice. But actually, speaking of reclaim, let's see what is the counter. Bottom team, 180,000 must reclaim. Top team, 210. So yeah, quite a difference. It's basically one wall fat boy and a change, so yeah. But when it comes to the mass income for the teams... Team 3 musketeers is actually 100 mass ahead with 1,600 for them. While the top side team, the Justice for Tilly is on 1,500 mass income, so yeah. Bottom team is ahead, even though they have less map control. As we can see, Arch team could actually finally managing to go and push back the AI with a... a rather interesting choice of making a Ravager firebase. But hey, if it works, and if it buys with the map control, then yeah, it's definitely a good choice. Another small scaffold gonna happen in the middle. As we can see, Percival's exchanging fire between each other. As a single Blackbeard gonna fly over them. Or make it two Blackbeards, as the AI player is trying to go and scout the opposing team. Let's make the ASF check. 190 ASF for top team, meanwhile Cement is on 160, so 30 ASF less. GC have been finished by Bully Noob, and it seems like instead of going versus the AI forces, it is gonna go and join Paralon on the mid lane here. As the big army belonging to FTX, I mean, uh, the Wheelie, is actually proving to be quite a danger to the bottom side team. And recognizing that fact, the Galactic Colossi is actually gonna reinforce the left flank. But hey, it seems like he might actually have to go and divert him towards the other's flank. As we can see that the AI fatboy have been finished. And there is not much that can actually stop it, unless he will walk straight into this Klinghammer installation, but... The AI seems to be just skirting around the edge of it, so... Yes, I'm afraid to say... That this firebase won't really cut it out versus that fat boy on the right flank, so... Okay, here is the answer. The answer is here, and it's called Galactic Colossus, which I guess is gonna go and buy the time for the Harbingers. To basically go and close the distance toward the fat boy. After all, GCs are a very tanky boys. 100,000 HP is nothing to scoff at.
And the GC of the left side seems to have been gifted to Paralan so that he can actually properly micro it. And he's gonna walk it straight into the ACU belonging to the wheelie. Who is actually starting to build up a lot of shields. So I don't think that his ace usually be out there, like yes, he might have the double shield available, but GC is still gonna be a force to be reckoned with. As we can see, the flanks happening as Mr. The Wheel is gonna try to grab as many units as possible, his ace is gonna take a lot of damage, as it's basically gonna try to overcharge the enemy units. HCU dropping below half HP as the shield have been finished off and the wheel is unfortunately gonna get shot down and in 27 and he is oh my goodness the best player have been killed so fast and I have no words he just walk in straight to the enemy GC like sure he can go and finish off the GC with the remaining Percivals, but losing the highest rated player, the macro god for the top team, is gonna be horrible. Yeah, and now Artsinka is gonna be the one coming under the fire from the enemy chicken. As we can see, the Edota actually just coming in hot. He's gonna try to go and kill it with the Percivals, but we can see the ball is gonna most likely gonna no, it's gonna miss. As Arsinker Ace is gonna go and stay alive on 2500 HP and oh boy. Whew, the top team nearly threw the game here and now, considering that they nearly lost two ACUs at the same time. And those were the two highest rated players for the team, but yeah. The loss of the Willy is gonna be a drastic problem here. And I have no clue how the team Justice for Telebili is actually gonna go and recover from it. Because right now we will go and have Mr. Arsing. I have to go and play versus four players at the same time. Which is gonna be horrible for his macro game. Like, you have to basically go, what? Deal with one base, two, three, yeah, three bases at the same time, and four opponents. That is gonna be very, very hard. I don't wanna even think just on how much stress he is right now under. As the GC from Waffle Noob is gonna basically go and kill this part, not only the fat boy belonging to AI, but now they're also gonna go and kill the another Galactic Colossus belonging to AI, meaning that those two were nothing but a mass donation. And it seems like the counter attack is gonna go and start right now. Etota being fielded by the yellow AI as Palchiab is gonna go and push with it. But the problem is here that Mr. Doninoop is unfortunately unable to go and support him properly. He just doesn't have enough units available here. And the AI is just gonna go and march straight into the enemy units. This is gonna be very very bad, especially as we can see that the another Colossi is gonna go and join the fray. Meaning that this chicken is gonna get dispatched in no time. 2GC is gonna open fire in a few more seconds. Yep, there we go. As the Edota HP is gonna basically go and melt down. Even more so as we can see the Hardlingers coming to go and start shooting him. And well, 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 goodbye little boy. But this is gonna be really hard now. As Arch Simcat will basically have to go and crush the wall AI bases ASAP. As otherwise, the right flank is gonna go and fall down as there is nothing to go and stop the two GCs from Waffle Noob. But it seems like he's not gonna go and risk it yet. He is not risking it for it seems like he wants to go and grab some more units. <laughs> or the men actually just go and start his wall own. GC factory here as we can see, so he can produce a GC every minute. As the third one is already walking into the front line. And I can assume that with three GCs available, he's just gonna go and make a push happen. Arch Simka trying to still go and make something happen on the left flank. Yeah, he's not really having a good exchanges here. Those are actually pretty bad. 
especially as we can see all of this engineer from Paral and just sucking up all of the reclaim available. And the T2 artillery? Yeah, it's gonna get some decent value here. So Paralon really nicely grinning out the mid lane. And at the same time, it seems like our Simcat is really having trouble dealing with the AI forces in the left flank. He just doesn't have the units to go and punch through them. As the men need some kind of experimentals, a fat boy, a GC, anything. Because the Percivals and Ravagers alone are just not gonna cut it. Okay, Bully Noob actually starting the March of the Damned. As the Galactic Colossi are finally gonna start marching towards the bases belonging to Donny Noob. The Titans and Percivals gonna try to run away from them. But the question is... For how long can you keep on running? Because after all... It's not like you can move your base around, so yes. It seems like the AI bases are gonna be basically written off. As the forces belonging to Donny are basically retreating further and further back. And with the MAA actually being available around this position here for Waffle Noob, it seems like it's gonna be really hard to go and use gunships to deal with them. More GCs coming in. As the AI is basically gonna go and walk straight into the GCs to fire a single overcharge. Which is gonna yield some damage to the GC, but unfortunately... It's not gonna be enough. And as such, the first AI have been erased. But man, unless the top team can actually go and deal, make something happen versus this bad boys here. Oh no, Donny, Donny, this is very, very bad. This is just horrible exchange. You're gonna lose a bunch of T3 units for basically nothing at all. As the GCs are basically getting free value outside of, out from the enemy units. Which were basically just fed to them by Donny. And now the wall base is also gonna go and come under fire. As the nuclear mushroom is slowly dissipating. Just as the base is gonna also start being basically disintegrated by the iron lasers on the galactic colossi. T3 pigeon down. And yes, there is nothing to stop it. And I don't think that the wrestlers are really gonna go and call it a day. They are not gonna be enough, you will need double damn on that you have Donny. And oh my goodness, it seems like Artsim that is basically playing a survival game versus the AI on the left flank. Parallel is gonna go and take this chance to basically go and send a single GC known as LolK LolKov4 to basically go and erase any kind of resistance on the mid lane. As we can see, that this expansion is basically unprotected. There might be a few Percivals here and there, but I don't think that's gonna be enough, okay? 3GC is gonna go over to the Titans and everything, as the Resterers and Broadswords are gonna come in. The T2 Flak and T3 MAA are gonna go and open fire against them. As we can see them taking a lot of damage, but I don't think that this MAA might actually be enough. Cement, is he gonna respond with the air units or not? Because these GCs are right now all gonna go and fall down. As the wrestlers are actually managing to go and chew through the enemy MAA. Meaning the GCs are gonna be next on the list. And just like that, and just like that, we can see the wrestlers switching the targets, going for the free GCs, which still should be capable of erasing the whole AI base. But though they may erase the base, they are gonna become a massive muzzle nations for the top team. Let's go for the split screen and see what is happening on the left flank, as we can see that 
Not only Waffle is dealing devastating damage to Justice for Telebili, but also Paralon, together with his AI friends, are basically ready to go and crush our Simcat on the left flank. SACU is gonna get it shot down. SACU blowing to AI is gonna be the next one, as we can see it explode. As the base is gonna be the next one, as the DPS from the Restorers is proving to be just inefficient. It's just not enough to go and stop this much of HP in the... in the GCs. But Paralon on the left flank is actually gonna move in the GC together with his land forces, closer and closer to the base belonging to Arsimkar and his ACU himself. The GC from Bully finally gonna get shot down after erasing the wall base belonging to AI as we can go back to the single screen. And take a look at the last stand of our sim card. Because the man here... Wait, why is there a Novax mate here? As it seems like there is not a single shield actually available. So this is gonna be very very bad, so let's go back to split screen and see if... Arsim is actually gonna go and defend himself as the Airbit belonging to Doninup is coming under fire from the orbital laser belonging to Paralon. Okay, the GC gonna come under fire. Gonna take quite a lot of damage from the Ravagers and Percivals available to Arsim cut. T3P gen gonna explode in a few more seconds or maybe not as it seems like he will not take enough damage to be shot down in a single volley. Okay, Arch will stay alive to go and see another day. As the shields are popping up on the air grid belonging to Insidious Noob, it seems like the pigeon gonna explode and another one gonna go down, another one, and yeah, it seems like it's gonna be a big chain reaction as the wall air grid belonging to Donino is gonna go up in flames, or maybe not yet, as it seems like he can still go and stay alive for a little while longer. As the shields are gonna come online just in time to go and save a few more pigeons. Meaning that the power is still gonna be available for the topside team. Now let's see what are they gonna go and do with all of this mass available here. This is what? 70,000 mass available. But there is three more galactic colossi coming in here from the bottom side as Waffle Noob is gonna go for the round two. Never mind, it's not gonna be three, it's gonna be four of them. And I would wanna really see the Restorers go to basically half a billion HP here. If we actually count in the Harbingers and the available MAA. Another satellite being built by not only Paralon, but also by AI. So it seems like the AI is using the satellite to just kill random Percivals around the field, so yeah. Yeah, I don't even gotta have a lot of trouble here dealing with the two Novaxes. Arch Simcat still alive on the left flank. That man is doing quite well in this survival game mode. But the big problem is the fat boy. The fat boy from the AI. From Mr. Budak. There is just nothing to go and stop it. Already 14,000 mass killed. And with no T2 artillery emplacements available, this Ravagers might become a song of the past. Or never mind, there is a few clink hammers available here, but they are just not in range yet. As for now, we can see that the Fat Boys are getting quite a decent value versus the Galactic Colossi from Arch. But no art sim cut, you cannot make this push. This push here is Mazonation. You might go and kill a few cling hammers or some other stuff. But the LOL LOL Kobe 4 Galactic Colossi is gonna make sure that you cannot actually go and deal more damage than a few hundred mass. So yeah, this is bad choice. But the big problem is gonna be the right flank. As we can see, the five Galactic Colossi 
to get there with a bunch of flak and MAA. Are gonna make the push happen. Flak opening fire. As we can see, Donin gonna take a shit ton of damage. As the Shiv G have been brutal. The damage is absolutely massive. As we can see, the flak just basically ripping a new one to the Rosserers. And as such, the gunship tactics are not gonna be available for much long. What I wanna see at this moment is basically a Mercy spam. I know, Mercies have been changed, they're awful lead snipes, but if you actually go and grab a few of them and basically move in all of them versus this bunch of flak, this flak is all gonna die together with the shields in no time. Anyway, a nuclear missile have been launched by someone and it's gonna be the AI, the Seraphim boy, launching the nuke versus the Paralon, it seems. And it seems like it's gonna go and delete this wall base around here. As I see no other targets on the line of flight for the nuclear warhead and there it is. Kaboom, baby. Kaboom. Honestly, quite a nice nuke. Dealt a lot of damage. <laughs> but the Paralon... The man is just making sure to go and fund the UEF space program by himself. As the first Novax is already hitting the field and it seems like instead of going for the air fuel belonging to... Insidious Noob. It seems like he's gonna go and change the target and go and harass the base belonging to Archsyncat. Who is still basically in the survival game mode. Yep. All the Novaxes are going to the left flank to basically go and erase the base belonging to... Oh my goodness, is it me or are they all stalling energy? Yes, they're all having energy trouble as all the shields are blinking all the time, be it the air grid belonging to Donny or be it, or be it the base belonging to Arsene. And so again, they have some energy trouble. Sniper bots from Donny getting some very decent value versus the enemy army. As this is basically a bunch of GCs and a shit ton of MAA available. Nothing to actually go and deal with the sniper bots. But even if you keep making a death ball of snipers, the problem is gonna be how actually are you gonna go and chew through this HP here. There is just so much of it that it can basically waltz into your bases and you are still not gonna be able to go and deal with it. But man, this AI is really getting its value. 30,000 must killed on the fat boy, so yeah. It seems like even AI can make a good usage of it at times. Just gotta make sure it won't go and suicide it. But yes, this is very... Oh my goodness, I didn't even take a look at the mass income in quite a while. And it seems like both of them have nearly 3000 mass per second income, and only 2000 available for the top side, so yes. This is truly gonna be a pinnacle of survival gameplay. As Arch Simcat not only have to go and defend the front line, but now also have to go and defend this beautiful power grid from the incoming fire from the enemy Novaxis and yes this is absolutely horrible as the Novaxis not only managed to go and chew through the shields but now are also killing the build power to just go on and start killing the available T3 pigeons next so yeah Arch you better really work hard to protect your power because without it you're gonna be nothing our team cut using 4 GCs to go and make a push versus the AI forces here. But it seems like it's gonna be a fight versus time because on the other flank we can see that the 
bully forces are basically marching onward, the five GCs, supported by a billion flak and a bunch of T3 redeemers, are coming closer and closer to the area belonging to Doninum. As there is not much to protect it. A single GC, bunch of oblivion turrets and restorers is not gonna be nowhere enough, even more so as the 6th GC is also joining the fray. So this is gonna be absolutely hard to defend, especially as the power grids are falling one after another, meaning that the top team is also gonna go and lose their power. So the shields are gonna most likely go offline in a few more seconds, as we can see that the GCs of Waffle Noob are coming closer and closer. And I really do love the T3 Strat Bombers coming out from Cement to go and harass the GCs belonging to Art Simcat. And yes, yes, strategic launch have been detected. But I don't think it's the thing that's gonna win the game because the winning move is actually happening on the top right side side of the map as Bully is just going all in. Two GCs versus five. Restos and a bunch of other units are not gonna be enough to go and stop this onslaught. Oh my goodness, it seems like the nuke actually might go and finish off Arsim, but who is just unaware of what is happening. As the top team is losing all the sides at the same time, it's gonna be a bullseye as AI scores a double kill by killing not only the wall base, but also the highest the highest rated remaining player for the top team as Arsim can have been basically eradicated. And now with him being gone, we can go and take a look at the top side where we can see. The restaurants are trying to go and deal damage, but they are basically tickling the Galactic Colossi as the flag is basically eradicating one restaurant after another. One GC gonna go and fall down. GC from Donny gonna go and face plant as it was the last line of defense, and now there is nothing to go and stop Bulinu. As it seems like the two musketeers and cement are gonna go and secure the first win in this best of three. Insidious Noom gonna try to run away with his ACU, but I'm afraid. It is not gonna happen. Another new connecting versus the remnants of the base belonging to Art Simcat, but Doninook is actually gonna go and say GG as he control case to go and save the time. And with this, it seems like the victory is gonna belong to the team. Two Musketeers and Cement. And why not three? Well, because Blinchik is not here, so it's gonna be two Musketeers and Cement. As hopefully in the game number two, we're gonna have all three of them available together with Cement. But yeah, last AI gonna get shot down by the GCs. And GG, well played. As we're gonna move on to the game number two.